Hi, this is Donna Gates with Body Ecology Living, and this podcast is with Dr. David Minkoff, who has an amazing center, quite special, down in Clearwater, Florida. So he's going to give us tools, tell us about the tools they use in his center. There are lots of things we cover in this podcast. Uh, First of all, he tests every single patient who comes there for the spike protein. Is it still persisting? And you will be very, very surprised at that answer. Um, Also, we go into autoimmune diseases. Are they really real? Is the immune system just kind of going crazy and just attacking different organs throughout the body? I think you'll be surprised and happy with that answer. And it can help steer you in the right direction for what you should be really treating, uh, not going on an autoimmune drug. And then um, we talk about the blood clots that are showing up and the lining of the blood vessels, what's going on there. Very, very important to know because... Blood clots are in so many people today and are affecting our our cardiovascular system. And then, of course, you have to. We had to go into fatigue. That's the number one problem that all long haulers uh, are concerned about. And that means bringing up and talking about the mitochondria, the little energy factories inside the cells that are damaged by the spike, you know, protein. And so they have to be brought back online again. So we talk all about how to do that. And then um, we actually bring up something called methylene blue, which some of you, I'm sure, are very aware of and are taking it. You'll be thrilled with what he tells you about methylene blue and whether he uses it and his other patients. And then also one of my favorite topics is ozone. Now, ozone therapy is not that well known, but if you're a long hauler, you should become very familiar with it. So let's just jump right in and have an interview with Dr. David Minkoff. I have to interrupt this podcast for just a second to let you know that it's possible that this podcast will not be allowed to go up on YouTube. And if there are certain words that you're saying, you're shadow banned, but I would recommend to hear the full interview to go over to rumble.com forward slash body ecology. Thank you very much, and welcome uh, welcome to this podcast. Thank you, Donna. I'm happy to be here and speak with you. Are you having a lot of long haulers coming to the clinic right now? Yeah. We, so. we do some energetic testing on people, and 90% of all comers respond to COVID or spike protein. Uh, wow. And it's both the ones that have had a uh, vaccine and ones who haven't had vaccine. And so uh, this thing is in society, it's everywhere. Um, Today, for the first time in probably all week, I actually saw somebody who didn't test positive for COVID because we're we're testing everyone. And it's a challenge for many people and it's, uh, you know, it's not going away, so. Mm Uh, and the other thing about it is that lots of people know that they they will diagnose themselves as a long hauler. They'll yeah. try to get help. They don't get any help. They're reading all kinds of you know information, joining chat rooms. Everybody's way off base is what I'm noticing. And then finally, functional medicine practitioners like Dr. Patrick Hannaway, who I'm sure you're very good friends with. Dr. Leo Gallen has great yeah. information. Also, probably one of your best friends, Uh, since you all kind of came up together and helped develop the world of functional medicine with Dr. Bland, Jeffrey Bland. Um, So Patrick Hannaway, with a group of other people, have finally come out. I mean, for a while now, they've been studying uh, what this is, and they have a program, and they're using that program to train more practitioners. I would love it if people, these practitioners actually also came to you and and got training, too, because I... Uh, I, I notice I've been studying their program, and I still feel like they're kind of missing some things, uh, which I've got everything laid out here, so I wanted to kind of go into it. First of all, um, one of the things that you hear all the time is that um, these people that have, um, you know, the COVID, these, let's see how to put it, um, you know, so people get COVID, they may not even get a bad s- symptoms, but they it just kind of develops out of nowhere for some people. Like, do you think, first of all, that this is a new autoimmune condition? Because I'm kind of questioning that, and I would love your take on that. Well, I think there's there's two things. Bodies can develop autoimmunity to lots of different, or, or in response to lots of different insults. 
You know, you see autoimmunity in heavy metal toxic boys, uh, patients. You see it in patients that have spectrums of infections, whether it's, you know, like Lyme disease or Epstein-Barr or herpes 6 or to parasitic. And virtually everybody walking around now has a leaky gut and leaky gut is the key to autoimmune disease. And so we, you see this 99% of the people we see have an, uh, on an energetic testing are autoimmune. And it's something that you have to address. And COVID is actually part of this complex. It's just another thing added to the, um, to the viruses and parasites and bacterial infections and bad teeth. Uh, and stress and that they've got. And it's hard to get people well unless you really address this whole thing on an individual basis to people so that you can do the specific right things for them and then they'll get better. Yeah, I mean, we find that almost everybody can recover. They just have to do the right things. And it's not, I don't see it as so much of a cookie cutter thing. Like there are programs out there from, from FLCCC and other people who are, who've done really great work. And I think that's a suggestion list for a person mm -hmm. with COVID or a template for a doctor who treats this stuff that he then has to do the specifics for that particular patient that's in front of him so that he can address the things that need to be addressed. Um, and then that, then, then, People, you know, usually people respond and um, and they can get better. Yeah. And that's spoken with confidence since you've probably done this many, many times. But um, so when you if you ask somebody uh, what is an autoimmune disease or look up a definition, it says the immune system is attacking organs in the body like it's gone crazy. Uh, I've always had a, a objection to that because I don't think the immune system is going to go crazy or it's not, it's, I think it's super intelligent. So to me, it is attacking those things, the virus, uh, the toxins are there. So it's trying, you know, attacking, trying to help. Uh, so basically what you just said completely agrees with, with what I feel. And so I really think the, uh, mis there's a misunderstanding around um, this term autoimmunity. And not so long ago, maybe in the 50s, when it was first brought up, the doctors at that time didn't didn't think it made sense because they didn't think the immune system would attack these organs. See, uh, I so, look at it this way. I think yeah. the body is the most intelligent device ever created. And it one of its main rules is that it can, it's it's conservative about its resources. And so if you look at the body response as it's trying to solve a problem and part of the solution, the body develops autoimmunity. And it wouldn't waste its time on this if it didn't think that this was gonna solve what's wrong. And what we find in people who have like real autoimmune diseases, you know, they've got diagnosed lupus or Sjogren's or rheumatoid arthritis or one of these things mm -hmm. is that their body is responding in a way that it thinks is going to fix it. It isn't going to fix it, but it thinks it is. And then, and it doesn't waste resources. So then if you find the real triggers for this condition and you solve them, then these proteins, these autoimmune proteins, ANA, rheumatoid factor, all these anti-mitochondrial antibodies, all these other things that are done, the body stops making them. And then after four to six months, these antibodies sort of, they, they dwindle out. And then lo and behold, they don't have the autoimmune disease anymore. You do an ANA and it's negative or a rheumatoid factor and it's negative and a sed rate and it goes down or an HSCRP, these things go down. And they don't, it isn't really a disease. It's a condition that the body has a problem it's, it can't solve or it's unable to solve. It makes mistakes. Its own tissues look foreign. It attacks them. Well, the tissues probably do look foreign because there's foreign stuff sitting on those receptors or, mm -hmm. or, or altering the way the receptors look. And the immune system is supposed to identify self versus not self. And if self doesn't look like self, it goes on the offensive because it's trying to, it's trying to 
you know, that looks like something foreign that would overtake it. And I think if you look at it this way, what is causing this to do this thing, then you can solve it and then it goes away. Part of the problem with long COVID is that most of the bodies that have been either infected or for sure with vaccine have been uh, given a, a stimulus to produce massive amounts of foreign protein, which is spike protein and probably other stuff. And so you have massive amounts of this stuff being produced. Originally, it was stated, you know, it's just in the arm and it's just going to bother that one area and the antibodies will be produced and they'll circulate around and they'll protect you. What they found out very quickly is that it didn't stay in the arm and it went all over the body. And then it, 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 it hit multiple organs and massive numbers of cells were producing these foreign proteins, these foreign antigens, the spike protein. And then the immune system did the appropriate thing, which is like we're being overwhelmed with this thing and we're going to go on attack. And then you get all the things that go with it uh, with, with long haul COVID because the whole circulatory system is messed up. And you've probably seen the pictures with the gigantic clots. We look at, we look at everybody's blood when they come in on a, on dark field and you can see micro clots on all these people. You see them, they're there. The platelets are 10, 15 times bigger than they're supposed to be. They block up blood vessels and they, and they cause disease. And if you can get them unclotted, give them things that break up the platelets, allow the circulation to improve. They, 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 within a week or two, they start feeling better because now they're circulating. You know, if you're not circulating your brain, you can't think or remember. If you're not circulating muscles, you got pain all over. If you're not cir circulating in your lung, you can't get air and you're short of breath all the time. So these are things that, that are like very common and addressable. And, um, and, and for most cases, there are solutions and, and then people, they, they get better. They, they get better. Along well, with what you said earlier on, they got to eat the right thing. They got to go to the bathroom every day. They got to get enough sleep. You know, they got to do all the basic stuff plus the thing specific to their to their condition. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think it's really important that we you brought this out and explained it so beautifully because over and over and over again, I have people tell me, oh, my wife has an autoimmune condition and she's on this drug or that drug. You know, they're not getting to the root cause, of course, and you just explain the root cause. So I hope people took notes and realized. So that's why I ask you to start off with, do you think there is such a thing as an autoimmune condition? So, yeah. But the other thing besides the spike protein uh, persisting, they also have persistence of viruses that are already in the body, like um, herpes, the whole herpes family and Epstein-Barr and uh, probably Lyme, you know, do you see that? I mean, you know, the, the virus awakens yeast infections, it attacks the gut, uh, that ACE. Okay, so here's another thing I would like to, you know, have a conversation about is that um, everybody knows about the ACE2 receptor. The media told us over and over that that's how the virus gets into the body, into the cell. Right. But they don't explain that as the virus gets into that receptor, the ACE2 receptor, it damages the receptor and the whole tissue. You know, I mean, the, the cell and then the, the lungs or the heart or the kidney. So um, do you specifically, like Leo Gallen has a program and, you know, Pat, Patrick Hathaway's group and all, but they, you know, they, they, they talk about the ACE2 receptor and they address it. Um, do you specifically address that? the tissue damage that's done? One of the things that's been, that's been interesting for us is we have a device which can actually measure. So the inner lining of the blood vessel system, which is probably 100,000 miles worth of tubes in, a, in anybody's given body, the, the inner lining cells, they're called endothelial cells, they are supposed to manufacture a mucus layer, it's called glycocalyx, that's on the inside of these blood vessels. And this is the protective layer for the blood vessels. And if that layer gets too thin or damaged, then the inner lining of the blood vessels is injured. This is one of the things that leads to artery disease and plaque and all that other stuff. So we've been measuring 
So there's a there's a there's a mechanical device now. It's a camera where you can actually measure the thickness of the glycogalyx. Mm, wow. and we're finding just about everybody has very damaged glycocalyx and part of the rehab of it. And, and so these ACE2 receptors are all over the place. Mm-hmm. And part of the rehab of it is to get the body to manufacture this stuff back so that you can then protect these, these tubes, which deliver blood and tissues without blood don't do well. And so it's, it's just part of the thing that we've learned um, in looking at these various things of trying to figure out like what is actually going on? What's the pathology that the bodies that were working are now not working or are only working 50%. And that's, um, that's been interesting. The other thing that we're seeing is that when you look at the blood under the microscope, under a dark field microscope, there are these things called their, 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 they're hydrogels. They are substances in the body which form these weird looking structures. They look like pieces of, they almost look like pieces of what a yeast, what a budding yeast would look like, but they're not that. And these things we didn't, we never saw before COVID. And now every day in many people, we are seeing these things. And there's all kinds of theories about what they are. But they're also part of this can't circulate, can't move blood through the way they're supposed to, which leads to all these symptoms. So, um, you know, so just to come back to the ACE2 receptors, yeah, they're there. Yes, the virus was designed to target them. Yes, it's part of the pathology. And um, and yeah, I think in, in sort of the way we look at it is we sort of, we captured in what we're doing anyway. And um, and once you can get the blood thinned out so that it actually can circulate and you can calm down the inflammation, um, then the then the then the person starts to feel better. Well, of course this thing the question in everybody's mind right now is how do you do that? So if we can just hold off the solutions a little bit longer because we still have a bunch of questions. Um, so um, let's see. So you know, I'm reading and hearing a lot about something called T cell exhaustion. Can you explain that to people? Because I think it's just another good thing to know. Well, so the the we have two two immune systems, and one of the immune system is innate, and the other one is one that gets that in response to things gets turned on. And so, part of our immune system eats the bad guys, and the other part of the immune system makes proteins to attack the bad guys. And to remember that they saw those bad guys before and they're going to go. And if they see them again, they're going to go after them. And the immune system can get exhausted, just like any organ can get exhausted. We see people with low levels of pancreatic enzymes. They're, they're exhausted. We see people with uh, we measure IgA levels in people's stool specimens. And you can see that the the immune system in the gut is supposed to produce these proteins to protect the gut lining. And on the lab, we use a level supposed to be 100. And I saw somebody today that the level of IgA, the surface IgA in their gut lining was only six. So any of these systems can get exhausted, including these T cells, which are which are activated. They're lymphocytes that are supposed to produce antibodies and protect us. And if if they've been driven to overproduce for a long period of time because they're foreign particles in the body, whether it's COVID or spike protein, um, they get tired and then they can't do it. And then your immunity goes down. And then all the other things that you've been living with, you know, in a cubic foot of air, there's a trillion organisms. We live in a sea. We are a sea of microorganisms. You know, our mitochondria are ex bacteria. That's what makes us go. And so when you have health, you have balance of the bugs outside of us and inside of us, and it all works. And when you don't have balance, some of the ones that are, that were living with us, that were, were, were sort of part of us, but not injuring us, begin to injure us. And that's why you see act- reactivations of all these viruses that we're all full of. And then that sort of adds to the party, so to speak, 
because now there's so many things that the immune system has to deal with, it can't deal with it. And it's, um, and now you get, you know, you get people who feel terrible. Mm-hmm. It's beautifully explained. I appreciate you making things so simple for people. Now, fatigue is probably the, supposedly the number one symptom of somebody that's a long hauler. I know that you're one of the few people in the country that can actually test the mitochondria. And uh, they, that's another thing that's damaged by the uh, virus is the mitochondria where we get our energy. So what, can you just talk about how you address that? And I would love for you to just kind of run with all the tools that you have there at your enormous center. Like on my bucket list, I'm going to be coming there for sure. But because um, you have so many amazing things, especially for diagnosing and then treatment. So can we just sort of get into some of the tools that you're using? And I know you individualize them uh, based on what you know you're seeing in a person. Uh, so that's what everybody's wanting to hear is what do you do? So the first half of it is a careful analysis of what is in front of me and what is this person got. The average person that comes to our clinic has been to 13 doctors. So we're seeing the, the, you know, all the other people who went to doctors at some point in, in their, in their journey through this whole thing, they got figured out and they got better. They figured it out themselves and they got better and they don't end up on our doorstep. Now, I don't advertise for people who who never get better doing anything, but it seems that that those are the people that that we see the most. And so I have to figure out what is it that's going on with that person? And what is the sort of, you know, the, the best analogy is if you're a, if everyone just for a second here pretends that we are big game hunters and we are walking in a jungle and we have a high powered rifle. And as we're walking along, we see a maiden that looks like Wonder Woman laying on the jungle floor unconscious. And we're about 20 feet away. And as we look, she's not moving. The first thing we spot is there's a gigantic black panther that's kind of licking her ankle and thinking about taking a big bite. And then we look a little further and we see wrapped around her stomach is a boa constrictor about ready to strangle her. And then we look a little further and we see Walking up her arm are a mother of black widow spiders with all her babies. And we look at the other arm and we see the, the sort of killer ants that live in Africa. A whole bunch of them swarming all over her arm. I hope she's dead at this point. <laughs> she's not dead yet. <laughs> but the choice that the hunter has to make is... And it has to be a correct choice of what does he shoot first. And if he has a fear of spiders and he goes after the spider or a fear of snakes and he goes after the snake and he doesn't go after the panther, which is the big immediate threat, then he's going to lose the girl. Wonder Woman is going to die. Now, every physician, when seeing a patient, is a little bit faced with a similar thing. Like you have to make a proper choice with your diagnostic tools of what are the priorities and what are the things that are, that the body is able to handle versus unable to handle. It's there, but where do you go and what do you do first? And, and one of the best examples of this, is a um, lady that came to me, actually her, her daughter brought her to me because this lady was one of the top real estate agents in Tampa Bay. So she's a power chick, you know, like- Definitely a very, superwoman. A uh, superwoman, very effective, tremendous communication skills, tremendous ability to communicate with lots of people, find deals, make the deals happen. 
high skilled person, very high skilled. And she went to another physician in, in the area because she was starting to feel some fatigue. And that physician did his diagnostics and said that she was heavy metal toxic. And that what she needed to get was intravenous chelation therapy. Chelation therapy is a, is a medicine that's given intravenously to bind up the heavy metals, lead, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, these kinds of things, and to get them out of her body. Well, did she have very efficient detoxification pathways to get them well, out? Or did she... Let me finish the story. So, okay. He but her... he's only going after the ants, in other words. He's not What's doing that? Well, this he didn't physician. Know. He, he, he didn't, didn't know. Okay. He didn't, have the, he didn't know this concept. So he gives her chelation therapy. And what happened is that she did have a sick gut. She did have a backed up liver. And when he gave her that chelation therapy, it pulled the lead out of her bones, which is where it was stored, and probably pretty safely. And it went to the liver, and the liver was on bypass because the liver is so toxic already, it couldn't handle it. And that, le that lead went to her brain, and she within weeks became a, a true bag lady. And when she came into my office brought by her daughter, she was carrying two large paper grocery bags, had grandma uniform on, had headphones on, playing constant religious music with an old style uh, track eight recorder in her pocket. And she was three sheets, sheets to the wind. And he picked the ants and not the panther. And that was a medical mistake. It took us about two years to get her back to battery because unless you work with the correct priority of the patient that you're dealing with, what can they actually handle? And what is the thing where if you sort of consulted with the body or consulted with their autonomic nervous system, what would be the thing that it says, yeah, do that? first yeah. and then your list sort of goes from there and with long cool. covid this is one of these things that's very important because these people have multiple things going on at the same time and if you pick the wrong thing and your treatment is somewhat aggressive you can make these people worse mm -hmm. i've seen that well um so so you mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, the person has to have a bowel movement every day. So that's really important to get these toxins out. Yeah. How do you know uh, if the person is capable of detoxifying what it is you're trying to get out of their body? Um, like even when the spike protein or any of these viruses are, are dying, yeast, for example, people often go through a Herxheimer uh, miserable stage. Do you try to avoid that with people or? Try to avoid it. Yeah. Try to avoid it. Try to be careful enough so that we're not doing that because these bodies are already in an overwhelm. Overwhelm means there's too many things going on and it can't deal with it. And so you have to gently move them to a point where what you're doing, they can do. You sort of find an ability that they have and you increase it. If you do something that's out gradient for them, then you just make them worse. And a lot of times in talking with these patients, you can, you can, you can, when you talk to them, you can say, you know, they're like, go easy on me, go easy on me because I'm really sensitive. And the last three guys I went to, they gave me X, Y, Z and I got sick, excuse me. And I couldn't mm -hmm. do it. And it's like, Oh no, we're going to go real easy. on Because you can't be time rushed to do this. And if you're time rushed, then you can't, you, you, you know, you, you can only go as fast as the body can go. And yeah, but do you, do you do things like um, like a laxative to make sure they are going to the bathroom and have them do enemas, clonics, like to get oh, those shoot. detoxification oh, pathways well, open? All, all the above. All the above. Okay, um, great, great. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Well, um, so is today. that where you start? Like first, try, you know, starting by, you know, opening up those detoxification pathways? Uh, yeah, well, Where do you it's start? A perfect one. I just saw this guy today. So this, the, these, this, the, these two people live in in uh, in the Carolinas, and they came mm -hmm. down for an evaluation. And I had seen them before, and they had been in a lot of trouble, and they got better, and they went back home, and they found a a, a functional medicine doctor in their town, and so the guy, um, so I was seeing him today, 
And the guy said to him, well, your next thing is that you've got parasites in your intestine, fine. And you've got, um, you got heavy metals and we're gonna start chelation on you. So I listened to the whole thing. The doctor did not give him, the doctor gave him pharmaceutical parasite remedies. He gave him fenbendazole and ivermectin and he gave him, uh, he thought he had a yeast infection and he gave him mitraconazole. Now I okay. use these medicines, but these are big time medicines. Yeah. I look back at the guy's chart and I see that he has had a lot of visceral fat. He's got fat in his liver. His liver tests were somewhat elevated. And then when I looked at his blood, I could see really a lot of toxic protein residues in his blood on the microscope. And I said to him, and then when I tested him energetically to see what his priorities were, it was actually, he had sort of subclinical long COVID as his big item. And when I tested to see, can you, you can, I, can he deal with metals now? It's like, no, his liver is stressed out. And I said, don't take any of the pharmaceutical medicines because they're all hard on the liver. And we got to get you cleaned out so that your liver can then, you know, get back to shape and handle this COVID, whatever this thing is, and then you can start to get better. And he will. But three pharmaceuticals, all liver toxic, plus IV chelation, they would hurt him. And the doctor isn't thinking with this model, with, with this sort of approach. And I think it's, it's, you know, it works way better if you, if you, if you do what I'm saying. You, 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 you can actually do, you can get better results. You know, only if you know how to. And um, so you're talking, you mentioned several times about um, how you can tell where to start. What type of testing tells you that? So it's called autonomic response testing. It's a, so the system, it's very interesting. If you look, um, the, the, the basic unit of a body is a single cell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you took a cell, and this has been done, and put it in a Petri dish and study how many enzymatic reactions are occurring in that cell in order for the cell to stay alive, okay? It's got to take in nutrients, oxygen, make whatever, you know, make proteins, whatever its job is, get rid of its waste. The estimate is 100,000 times per second, per second for a single cell. Now, if you count up all the cells in an average sized body, it's in the neighborhood of 100 trillion, which is a 10 with 12 zeros, okay? Now that's more than all the known stars in the universe. There's double that number of gut bacteria in the person's gut. So this is a complex system. And the nervous system is supposed to coordinate all this stuff. Like make assessments of what's the temperature, what's the humidity, what's the action outside, what's all inside. How do we keep a blood pressure and cells alive and a brain conscious in order to keep this organism alive. And the nervous system is supposed to keep track of all this stuff on a millisecond basis and coordinate it all. And unfortunately, the nervous system has heavy metals, chemicals, pesticides, hair dyes, you know, gob, you know, all the crap that we're, we're all full of. And it gets stuck, it can't work, it gets poisoned. And then 99% of people have deficiencies of uh, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, essential fats. And so they're missing pieces in their erector set. And their erector set's got bent stuff all over the place because of all the stuff we're in. And the job of the doctor is to make an assessment. And so the part of this system that's supposed to control all this is your autonomic nervous system. It's supposed to do all the regulation. It's mostly done on a below a conscious level because this stuff just happens by, you know, you don't have to think about Automatically, it. Automatically, yeah. Automatically. And so autonomic response testing is a way to tune into that system and say, okay, where do we start with you? Like, what are your priorities? 
what is the panther and what is the the python and what is the you know the ants and the spiders and w- how should we approach you to go after this and so the way i do it is it gives me that it gives me that and now i can safely proceed and get somewhere and uh and then go carefully so that i don't overdo it and sometimes we you know we make a mistake and i tell them after you got that treatment if you go home and for an hour or two you feel a little fluish that's okay but if you're down the next day we way overdid you and we got to back it off um and then you can you can inch your way forward with these people and some people go very quickly and in four to six weeks, they they clear them, they clear, and they and they do very well. And some people, if you can get their circulation working, they brighten up right away. And some people, it takes you know, it takes time, it takes months. Do you um, have a, like a whole? Well, first of all, everybody, I hope needs to know this that you have a supplement company, and it's called. Um, let's see, I've all written down here. I should know. I just ordered something in there. Body health. Yeah, body health. And so are mm-hmm. you trying to put supplements in there? I know you've got very famous amino acids that you're so well known for. Uh, they're supposed to be the best out there. And um, are, do you, are you putting supplements into your um, supplement company to address some of these things? Or Well, the supplement company grew out of the clinic. Mm-hmm. See, I, I, I started the clinic by accident because my wife got heavy metal toxic. And then I went to train with some other guys and how do you do this? And I came home with 14 supplements that someone had to take because they had heavy metal toxicity. And I just was like, this isn't doable. And then I learned how to do chelation and we started doing IV chelation in people who we thought had heavy metals before I sort of understood this. And I found that some of them that would, would, after their, after their chelation therapy and you gave them DMPS, which is a chelator for, for especially mercury. They would stand up from the chair and they would be holding their kidneys because they were the kidneys were stressed out by the thing. And I was like, man, this is not the right way to go. And so then we developed this product called Metal Free. I, I found a, a crazy savant biochemist and we worked together on this product. And it turns out it was it was just a brilliant product. It worked really well. And then I would talk to doctors and we had very good results at removing heavy metals very safely, even in babies. Uh, wow. and, babies? And, I mean, how do you give it to a baby? Well, it was drops, so you could you could you could drop oh, a baby. Oh, drops! It, great. it would it would it would it would get rid of their heavy metals, and so um, the so that so then doctors started to hear about this stuff, and I published some papers on it in some of the alternative journals, and they, we want this stuff, and out of that I said, okay, well, well let's make some. And we started making it, and that was in 2000, and that's where the supplement company came from. And and most of the stuff that we do are things that other people aren't making and that I needed in the clinic to get better results on the people that I was seeing. And, you know, I have half a dozen products in the hopper right now. We have about 35, 40 products now that we that we use, and we have about 2,000 doctors that buy the products because they're really good products, and they really help their patients. And, um, and they, they, they really work. My standards are high. So I want the, you know, I want to do the best stuff and I have control over this so I can, I can make sure that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally understand that. Well, um, so we mentioning back to energy fatigue, of yeah. course, if you get rid of the heavy metals, you're going to have more energy, but, um, is there anything, uh, any supplements in particular that you do for the mitochondria to help with restoring them again after? Uh, you know, after the COVID spike protein has hit. Yeah. So the, the key to the whole to health is mitochondrial health because cells that can make energy, they can do their work and the cells that can't enter, can't make energy can't. And the, the, the key is the mitochondria. So every one of these one cells that we talked about has about between a thousand and 2000 mitochondria. It's, it's about 10% of the body weight is mitochondria. And so these guys are sick. And like you said, we have a way where you can actually measure mitochondrial function and see how sick they are. And you're uh, one of the few people I understand that have this test. Yeah, it's available. Just most people don't want to spend the money to buy the equipment to do the test. But I, I, I found that it was it's very helpful because you can get a baseline on someone. 
Like, no wonder you can't get out of bed and walk to the bathroom because you're so exhausted. Because when we measure your bioenergy, when we measure your mitochondrial function, they are barely able to keep you breathing. And on the other side, if you look at a very high-end athlete who's got very amazing mitochondrial function, you test them and you say, well, no wonder these guys, like they're extraordinary uh, because their mitochondrial function is just so good. And so you can get an assessment with someone and then, you know, you can put in a, the corrections and it's mixtures of nutrients and hormones and detoxification to get them switched back on. And then they, um, then they start to get energy and their brains start to work. Uh, and then they don't have pain all over the place. And then, you know, they're getting better. We do a symptom survey when people come into the clinic. So it's like they fill out, take some 20 minutes. Like, do you have, and then one to 10, how bad is it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, good, people feel good under 25. And a lot of people come in at 150, 175. And usually within six weeks, their, their symptom survey, we have them redo it. And they don't remember what they put down when they came in. Mm -hmm. And they fill out the thing new. And a 175 might go to an 80 or a 65. And they don't even remember how bad they felt. Because sometimes you say to them, well, how are you doing? And well, I think I'm doing a little bit better. And I say, well, you, you had 175 points of symptoms when you came in, and now you're at 65. Like, you are really better. Whether you know it or not, you are really better. And they don't yeah. think of it now. Yeah, my chronic stomach pain is, isn't there anymore, and I'm having, actually having a bowel movement every day. And, you know, I can actually remember my own phone number now, and I just had a conversation with my wife, and I actually was able to follow the conversation. Like, like they they... They, they, they really are better. And if you remeasure their mitochondrial function, their mitochondrial function is better. They can actually wow. reduce ATP. Yeah. It's nice for people to have test results. To, it's, almost, it's so motivating to know, yeah, I have a problem with my mitochondria. I'm going to do this. Do the things Dr. Minkoff says to do. You come back and they are and is better. So that's really helps people go on, I think. It's yeah. good to know testing. What's so important about this is that many, many people who at least come to us have been to multiple doctors mm -hmm. and their basic CBC and CMP are normal and their physical exam is normal. And what the doctor then says, because she's anxious, she can't sleep, she's got pain, this is females way more than males. And he says, honey, you've got clinical depression. And he puts them on a drug, SSRI, Lexapro, one of these terrible toxic drugs, which is not a solution. It's another toxic drug. And so this person comes in where now not only does she feel been told that she's crazy, her husband's starting to wonder about it too because she's hard to deal with because she doesn't feel well. And the doctors told her she's crazy. And everyone says, well, you look good because she actually wants to feel good and she puts on makeup and tries to dress nice so that she can try to represent herself as how she remembers herself, even though she feels terrible. And so people look at her and they say, well, you look great. And she's like, no, I feel terrible. And then you do this testing on her, or you just put her blood up on the slide. I do this in the first visit. And I look at her and I say, your blood looks terrible. Your blood's terrible. You have biofilms all over the place and you have precipitated proteins and you've got all this other stuff. And I could look her in the eye and I could say, honey, you're not crazy. You are actually sick. And these other guys are all full of crap because they can't see what's in front of them and they can't make a proper assessment of you actually need help and your CBC and your CMP will be normal until one minute before you die. It doesn't mean that there's nothing wrong with you. But so often, you know, a person goes in and just 
just had this happen today. And somebody that I started helping and I immediately notif- noticed that she had a shake that she has in the morning that's incredibly high in oxalates. So you can put so many high oxalate foods and sugar into a shake. And I said, you got to get off of that first. First of all, do that. Then let's see where to go. Okay, so she's like desperate to get help. So she keeps going to different doctors, like you said. It just just was diagnosed with uh, bipolar. You know, his daughter, the doctor's daughter has bipolar, and the nurse has my daughter with bipolar. So they want to put her on a drug. And so she, you know, texts me and asks, please don't do that. She even has a genetic snip that I happen to notice that makes her not be able to clear those antidepressants, for example. And um, anyway, she's so adamant that she should do this, first, because the doctor said so. Secondly, his experience has a daughter with bipolar. And third, because she's not herself, just like you said. I'm not myself. And um, I have these crazy thoughts in my head, and I, I'm sure I'm bipolar. And so, you know, it's so frustrating because that doctor doesn't know any better. That person doesn't know any better. And it's difficult to explain that there could be like you said, ants, a python, and a, and a panther all causing a problem. That doctor isn't even thinking about panthers. Right. Uh, so it's, it's a difficult field, I think, to help people. Um, so much education. So in your case, do people, I guess people just come to you because they've heard that you have great results. But you must feel kind of frustrated, as all functional medicine doctors do, uh, that we're not helping people more because I feel that way. I feel like, gosh, all these years, for me too, 30 years like you, uh, it feels like, gosh, <laughs> you know, are people listening? Are we ever going to be able to help people enough? Like how how do you feel all the time about, I mean, do you feel frustrated, I guess is what I'm asking. Well, no, I feel sympathy. You know, it's it's like, you can see when someone's better and they know that they're better and they write you a success story and say, you saved my life, you helped me, I'm better. I had this happen today and it was just fantastic. So a young guy, 32 year old guy comes in here, ten comes into my office 10 weeks ago and he's got stage four lung cancer. So he's got lung cancer and it's all over his body. And he goes to uh, the big cancer hospital up in, in Gainesville, Shands Hospital, which is a very prominent hospital. In Florida, Gainesville, Florida. Gainesville, Florida. So it's a big university center. And they do some very magical things there, but they do some things that 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 aren't magical. <laughs> and so he went there and they said, uh, you have stage four lung cancer. You need to have this chemotherapy program. And he said, well, what's your success rate with the program? And so lung cancer kills is the, is the leading thing that lung cancer kills more patients than any other cancer. And it kills them pretty fast. So, Wait, so he's asking you, what is your success or he's asking? No, no, he's hospital. asking them. He said, you want me to oh, do this I'm program? Concerned. And he's a bright guy. And he's like, uh, how, well, and what can I expect? What's my prognosis doctor? And the doctor said, well, you know, we're the best place in the country or one of the best places in the country but the chance of you living five years are under 10%. So he's like, well, maybe I ought to look around in case somebody has better results than that because that isn't much to look forward to and I'm 32 years old. So he comes down and sees us. We do this program on him. Within two weeks, so when he came in, there was a lot of fluid around his lungs. He was having trouble getting around. And he's a young man, he's 32 years old. Wow. And he could not lay down to sleep on either side and he had to sleep in a lawn chair because if he so gets- what, Why would he get pain he breath, when he-, he- No, he couldn't breathe. He was just short of breath. There's tumors oh. all over his lungs. So he, um, he starts doing the program and at the program is 12 weeks. And at 10 weeks of the program, he is feeling really good and he's got energy back and he's sleeping now normal. And he decides to go out on his four-wheeler and he has an accident. Okay. And he slams his chest into the steering wheel, hits a, hits a log on a four-wheeler in the woods and bangs his chest on the, on the steering wheel. And he calls and he says, what should I do? And I said, you go to the hospital right now because I don't know what you did inside. Plus you have the lung disease. 
And he goes to the hospital and it turns out he had a bruised breastbone and there was a little bit of bruising inside. And so he was in the hospital for three days and the oncologist came to visit him. And he said, you know, you've got lung cancer and why aren't you getting regular treatment? And he said, well, I'm getting IV vitamin C and some of the other things that we use. And the oncologist said, to him, well, that doesn't work. Like you are insane. You should do my treatment, you know? And here the guy is a million miles better from when he was when he first came in. He's actually doing really well. And I saw him today because we just did a, a new scan after we finished the first 12 weeks of the treatment and 90% of the tumor is gone and he feels great. And he has not short of breath at all. He has no pain. He's doing everything he wants. And it's the inability, you know, the, the medical system is so like, can't look right or left. Yeah, they're like the horses with the blinders on. That's it's right. amazing. I, I can't believe they're that way. They must be so frustrated with their job and they're not being able to help people. But, but you did say, you know, you put him on the program, but there, there isn't a program like you're, you personalized it for him and his condition, right? It's very specific for, for each person. So the, the uh, program he got would be different from somebody else. Even uh, somebody else with lung cancer, the program might be different because these cancers are in, in a lung cancer in one person is not the same as a lung cancer in another person in terms of what are those cells sensitive to? What can you give them to kill off these cancer cells? In one person, it might be this set of things. In another person, it might mm -hmm. be a different set of things. And the problem you with the cancer is, is everybody gets the same thing. You know, you're 50 yeah. years old and you have breast cancer. Well, this is what you're going to get. And they're going to experiment. Some, I mean, not yeah. totally, but, a, but, but a lot of it is, you know, these are the chemo drugs that you're going to use. These are the hormone blockers you're going to use. Yeah. And it's just way more, it, it's, it's, it's a very crude way to look at it. Well, we're talking about cancer right here, and I know we've got to go soon, but um, do you, so you're, I'm always hearing, everybody's hearing, I guess, about, how uh, people with the spike pro protein, uh, whether they know they have it persisting or not, there, there's a lot of cancers showing up now lately. Uh, just like there's more heart conditions, especially in young people who are dropping dead in the you know football field. Um, do you do you feel there, that there's a? I mean, tons of stuff is all is since since this epidemic is mm -hmm. the you know the rates of these all these things are way up. But well, you've been um, watching epidemics for a long time, since that was one of your specialties. Have other epidemics in the past, other, you know, uh, coronavirus epidemics or the flu in 19, 1918, did they leave um, behind a trail of cancer and other problems like we're having now? Do you know if they? This is unique, I guess, to COVID. Well, uh, not COVID. recently, not like this. You know, the AIDS epidemic in the early 80s, I was an infectious disease doctor in the early 80s when the AIDS epidemic started. And that was unclear as to what was going on and what was causing it. And so mm -hmm. as, a, as a result of that virus and inability at the time to know what to do with that virus, there was, there was cancers that were associated with it. There were, there were a lot of other things that were associated with it. But this kind of thing is, is pretty unique. You know, Ebola hit for a while, I don't know of any association with Ebola and cancers, uh, mm -hmm. but with this virus, which is a, you know, this isn't a normal coronavirus. This is a, this is a bioengineered coronavirus. It's not, you know, it's, this wasn't a native thing. Mm -hmm. And um, that made it a problem. And, and what about the shedding too? Um, I've had, you know, some people knew I was going to do this interview, and this one friend said, please find out about the viral shedding. She's a practitioner and is always around people every day, and she feels she's, of course, not well herself, but she feels that um, she feels she can sense the shedding going on. She asked me to ask you that. So do you, are you, do you think well, there's I mean, such I a thing, and are you dealing with it? This, this, the, these, these proteins are being manufactured by the, by the body cells uh, in the people that have been vaccinated. And it comes out in the urine. It comes out in the stool. It probably comes out in the nasal secretions. It comes out. And so, like I said, over 90% of people that we look at 
Some of them have had vaccine. Some of them have had COVID mildly or even severely. Mm-hmm. We're finding the body has still got an immune upregulation toward this virus. And so I think we're, you know, it's all over. And I think it's going to take many years for people to stop making spike protein who, who, who got, um, who got vaccinated because the, the thing is designed to, to keep this thing producing. So mm-hmm. we are in it. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. I, I think you, I think the ultimate health is you just have to make sure that your own health habits are as optimum as you can get them. You know, your food and your sleep and your vitamins and your, and your social environment so that you, uh, you can keep yourself um, healthy. And then if you're healthy, you have a much better chance of not going down when one of these things comes through. Yeah, it sounds kind of discouraging because it's such a big problem and how to get rid of it. But I constantly see things like how to clear the spike protein uh, yeah. for your body. Do you... Do you, is, do you, can you, do you clear that spike protein? Well, you clear it in the sense that when you look for it now, is the person's body still reacting to it? Mm-hmm. And almost every time within a couple of months, it, it's not reacting to it anymore. So now it's just part of the terrain. And it's just sitting there. It isn't causing the person a problem. So I think, yes, there is, there are solutions for this. And like you said at the beginning, there's a number of people who have who have designed sort of programs that are sort of generic programs of, yeah, you know, take these things, you know, zinc or quercetin or or methylene blue. Do you? I know methylene blue is good for the mitochondria, but do you use methylene blue every day? Oh wow! How I much? Give it to every patient. Do you take it yourself? Oh yeah. Okay. How much do you take, and why do you take it? Well, lots I'm of people dabbler. listening to this want you know, to know what we're talking about. You know, methylene blue is a performance enhancer. So I, I race triathlon. Mm, that's right. Yeah. And I'm trying to win races. So um, I try lots of stuff. And when I tried methylene blue, I uh, read about the biochemistry and how it works and said, heck, I'm going to try this stuff. So I tried it and I can tell it helps me. I'm mentally brighter. My energy is better. My recovery is faster. And so I prescribe it for every patient that I see. Now, every oh, patient really? doesn't take the same amount. You know, mm-hmm. we start with a drop or two because some people are very sensitive. It will kill Lyme. It, will, it, it can kill cancer cells. It can, you can get a Herx from three drops of, of methylene blue if you are one of these sensitive type people. Um, right now, I'm taking about, there's an optimum for each person. I'm an, I, I take about 60 milligrams a day. I tried well, more. And it's I did drops. It's a lipozole. Oh, yeah. oh, do you have it in the, your supplement store? Um, it's coming to body health, but right now we we have it at LifeWorks. We have it at, at my clinic, and and we supply it for people. Oh yeah, but they they can't get it if they're just listening to this and they're in Clearwater. No, they gotta be a patient, and probably in within a couple months we'll have it. I'm gonna. I'm going to bring the product into body health because I think it's oh, good. it's a great yeah. it's a great addition for most people. And I, it's fantastic for um, UTI, which is such a persistent problem for yeah. so many yeah, women. That's another area. You know, if you don't flush the toilet right away, it stains the toilet's blue. So really, oh hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, so I never have that. Came in today, she she figured out a thing if she if before she sits down to, to urinate. She put some toilet paper on top of the water and then pees and then flushes it right away. Then their toilet bowl doesn't get stained blue. Well, um, I don't have that. Maybe I'm not taking enough. But, um, but also the it's blue better. tongue, I, I get temporary blue tongue and it clears really quickly. Gosh, I'm sorry for the dogs and all the noise. Well, I could ask you uh, lots more questions about this, and, and everybody who's listening is gonna or is wishing. Gosh, I wish you'd asked him this, and I wish you'd asked him that. Um, there are a bunch of wonderful YouTube video, um, podcasts out there, folks, so you can get more exposure to Dr. Minkoff. Um, you are, 
Like I also see you as a premier anti-aging doctor, which is important to me because I'm in my 70s too. And, um, you know, I, I think, oh, oh, the thing we have to talk about is IV ozone because you do that down there. And uh, do you know Dr. Bowerschmidt, um, Deeper Healing in Charleston? Dr. Bowerschmidt? Um, I just had a patient today that was seeing him that came down yeah. for a consult. Yes, I do. We're, we're really lucky to have him here. Doing just a lot of good things. Yeah, and we, we just right. opened up a beautiful new clinic, too. Uh, but he does IV ozone, so I'm really grateful for that. But can you just say just a couple of minutes about um, why you do it, what, what the benefits are? To me, it's like fantastically anti-aging because you are killing these viruses, which are aging you. Um, like what else does it do? Well, ozone, there's sort of three categories of ozone. Ozone will kill bad guys. Mm -hmm. So viruses and bacteria and those sorts of things, ozone will kill those guys. Ozone also will helps to detoxify things. The oxygen will bind with heavy metals and other things, and it helps in the detoxification process. But yeah. you have to have your detoxification pathways open. I, I wonder, when I go for IV ozone, and people are all sitting around in their chairs, I'm thinking, gosh, I hope everybody's detoxification pathways are open. He's just added uh, colon therapy uh, and brought in a colon therapist and all, which I was kind of really happy even suggested yeah. it, but um, because, you know, you're getting all this viruses and everything, kill, killing it, and you do have to get it out. Yeah, yeah, no question. The other area that ozone is, it's a performance enhancer. Ozone mm -hmm. resets mitochondria. And so it's Was very- Was it again, my ozone resets? Resets the mitochondria so that they can make energy better and faster. It's because a of the oxygen. Enhancer. Like we have, we have high-end athletes that come in and they get ozone mm. treatments. And it's legal because you can't tell they got it. It's just oxygen. But they uh, lift yeah. more, they run faster, they recover faster. It's a, it's a, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's the sort of universal antidote to about anything. You inject oh, ozone yeah. in the sore joints and the soreness goes away. You put ozone wow. in um, someone who's got chronic bladder inflammation and the bladder inflammation gets better. It's, it, it does everything. It kills cancer. So it's very good, and um, and it helps lots of people, including the spike protein because it kills viruses. It's, uh, I honestly think yeah. when you see a long hauler, you know, always when I'm talking to people that are long haulers, I I always want to say to them, you know, go find someone that does IV ozone, which I'm yeah. fortunate here to have somebody, but they're kind of rare. Uh, for the most part. So I would highly recommend people come down to Clearwater, but but you need more than one treatment. Like you can't fly down, get an ozone treatment and go home well. What, right. what do you recommend to people that live out of town? Well, if there's nobody locally, if the person's really sick, we have them come down here for six to 12 weeks and mm -hmm. they just stay. And they here. have a place to stay? Yeah. And then they just, you know, we do a whole program on them. So it's a combination of ozone and pulse magnetic field and hyperbaric oxygen. And, you know, we have a whole thing that they do, which is designed to like maximally rehab them from all the symptoms that they have so that their symptom score goes down to below 25 and they feel great and they can go home and they can go back to their life. And, you know, we do follow-ups on them uh, to keep them that way. But they, the, but that's how most of the people that we see who aren't local handle it you know they mm -hmm. just take but a, do you have like airbnbs that they can rent for those six weeks yeah. or yeah we, That's don't all have, set up we have we have a whole network of people who who have like clean spaces mold free wi-fi free well that's fantastic i would highly recommend to everybody uh, that can afford it, that can schedule it with your time and everything. To, this is so critical to be able to go somewhere where you really can get help. So can you tell Dr. Minkoff, how, how would they contact you? How would they set up a time to come down there? And then uh, also mention uh, your, well, I know you have a newsletter, you have two of them, you know, just could tell people how they can reach you. Okay. So the clinic is called LifeWorks Wellness Center. And the website is lifeworkswellnesscenter.com. Uh, there's hundreds of videos on there. There's lots of information. Um, if you're interested in being a patient, you can fill out a survey form. And then we have people who will call you and talk to you and see if we're going to be a good match for you. So 
Um, I have two other MDs here, both excellent. Uh, we have four nurse practitioners. Uh, I think we have over 80 staff in our clinic. So it's a big clinic, oh, uh, wow. very personal. And um, everybody that goes through the clinic loves the clinic and loves the staff because they're really good. And they have one purpose in being there, and that's to help people get better. So it's 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 a it's it's we're not a, we're a big. I've been doing this for thirty years, and I feel like I've kind of finally identified, you know, the most important things to do because there's so much you can do, and then you have to really, um, you know, co- what would you call it? Like congeal it down to just like the most important things. You're right. doing them all. So yeah. I I think you know thank you for the work that you do and for this years of especially for the learning. Um, I can tell how passionate you are and hungry for information. And then it translates to all of us out here. So thank you very much for what you do. Thank you. The The other website is bodyhealth.com. So it's my supplement company. There's also hundreds of videos on there. There's newsletters that you can sign up for. Um, you can buy products from Body Health on the Internet without being a patient. And um, so we're, you know, we're there to to see if what we got, you know, you're interested in and we want to help. Great. Thank you very much. Um, And we haven't even talked about your amino acids, which everybody, that you can go to Body Health and get the best amino acids. And they're so critical. And there are a lot of YouTube videos, probably also videos on your website about the importance of these amino acids, but that's that's the place to get them. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Donna. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. 